praise, a praise, a praise, a praise, the Lord, that we exalt your name, Lord. Exalt your name in this time, in this place. Yes, my brothers and sisters, maybe uh, with all that is going on, we may, we may have grown in intimacy through the events that are happening around us. We may have grown in intimacy with our own fears, with our own uns uncertainties, with our own brokenness. But today, the Lord is inviting each and every one of us to grow in intimacy with Him, to come near to Him as He has already done. He's inviting each and every one of us. Yes, He sees the disturbance. He sees what is happening around. But today, He's calling each and every son, each and every daughter into His presence, into His heart. As it says in uh, Sephaniah 317, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you over 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 you with loud singing. Today, let's open our hearts to him. And he is singing over each and every one of us. He's calling us into a deeper place, into his heart, that we truly belong that each and every one of us came from. So let's worship him. Let's love him. His love, his, his joy, to be a true experience. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, he 
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. It's you, Jesus. Hey. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. To be praised. Every praise is to our God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Praise your Father. Thank you. 
Our blessed mother gave her only son, Jesus, to us. 
through Jesus, we have received endless forgiveness and immeasurable grace. My brothers and sisters, so let us ask our dearest Mother Mary to intercede open to the words spoken today and, and we could have a closer relationship with God our Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, sisters and brothers. We warmly welcome all of you again and to all who are joining us from overseas. And if you are a newcomer, we warmly welcome all of you. And if you are a newcomer, the link to register is posted on the chat. So please do take a few minutes and to fill that. And if possible, we would love to see all your faces to interact with all of you. So please do switch on your cameras if you are in a position to. And without further ado, I warmly welcome Lalitata, fondly called as Lalitata, to share the message with us on intimacy in the Holy Spirit, God's light in the midst of the pandemic. We welcome you, Lalitata. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, as we come together once again, uh, the third part of it, you know, uh, actually uh, uh, doing what God says. Come to me, if you remember. Uh, the three things Jesus said, come to me, hear my, hear my voice or hear my word. And today, do what I tell you. So the topic I want to reflect together with you, do what God tells you to do. It looks pretty simple. Why do that? Because, okay, find out what God wants and then do it. So the question is tonight, how do you know that what you think God wants is also what you think? Or, or, or how do you know what God wants. And I like to show you an amazing thing, you know, why we, we need to come to God before uh, we try to do what God wants. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. But Saul, you can repeat that. Uh, meanwhile, Saul. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats. Was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Against the Lord's disciples, he went to the high priest. He went to the high priest. So he was he was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, and he went to the high priest. Why did he go? Verse 2. And asked him... And asked him... For letters to the synagogues in Damascus. For letters to the synagogues in Damascus. So that if he found any there... So that if he found any there... Who belong to the way... Who belong to the way, whether men or women, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. He might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. He looked to one terrible person, isn't he? Because uh, if you look at him, uh, he's breathing out murderous threats, number one. 
and he's asking for letters so that women and take them to the and make them prisoners in jerusalem he looks a pretty bad man you know but uh, if you look closely what is saul doing the answer is very simple he thinks he is serving god that's the question i want you to reflect tonight saul is convinced that he is serving god by uttering these murderous threats by trying to get in these letters but by going all the way from uh, jerusalem to damascus there were other jews there were other pharisees there were others who didn't believe in uh, in christianity but these people didn't take the trouble to do what actually uh, saul was doing so the the principle i like you to to see to 90s the principle is we may be doing something that we think is what god wants but it may not be so then how do we move from there how do we go beyond why did saul think that it was god's will that he persecute christians it's a very interesting question to ask why was he convinced that taking them prisoner was pleasing god because he was working from his own religious jewish background it's very interesting you know during the 30 year war between the tamil forces and the singhala forces we have uh, tamil christians and we have singhala christians and it's very interesting the way a tamil christian sees something in the war was very different to how a singhala christian saw it and sometimes uh, it was like a like a battle i remember during the war there was this discussion we went to and uh, we were talking to some of the leadership of the militants you know and one of them was a christian you know and uh, she gave a explanation of a of a situation through a christian interpretation and when she gave that explanation i remember one of our people who went with us got so agitated so upset because he said that is not the way to see it why because that person had been brought up his whole life as a singhalese and he saw things from the singhala background so in the question comes how are we seeing things in our life are we seeing it from a mere human background are we seeing it from the cultural environment of our times how can we go deeper how can we know what the voice we hear is god's voice how can we obey it very interesting to find out st paul himself gives us the answer tonight verse 3 if you look at verse 3 as he near damascus as he near damascus on his journey on his, his journey, journey suddenly a light from heaven suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him 
thrashed around him. Somebody took a photograph. So there was a, there was a, a queue to heaven, you know, and uh, everyone must be admitted one by one after their death. One guy, he was well, with a face smiling full, you know, his teeth were all out. He was smiling when he died. So St. Peter asked, why is this guy smiling when he's dead? And somebody, the angel said, no, during the storm, he thought they were having a photo shoot and he went and smiled outside when lightning struck him. So, so here, here was the light, you know, that came in. And light can also be called, in our own language, in our journey, spiritual journey, we can call it insight. Suddenly, a light comes into our life. Now, yet, St. Paul or Saul had not done what God wanted. He was doing what he thought God wanted. When this light came, and then, verse 4, if you look at verse 4, uh, he fell to the ground. He, he fell, fell to, to the, the ground. ground. And uh, heard a voice say to him. And heard, heard a, a voice, voice say to him. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul, Saul, why, why do you persecute me? And you can look at the next, uh, next, to, next uh, verse. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Who are you, who are Lord? You Lord? Saul, Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. I am Jesus, Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. So, my brothers and sisters, do you want to do what God wants? Then we better keep coming to meet him on a daily basis. If you want to do what God wants, you better learn to sit at his feet. And if we do that, there is often a breakthrough. A lot of people don't wait for a breakthrough. And here is the thing that we found here. When Saul fell down, he met the Lord. And this has a strong parallel in our own lives. You know what the parallel is? When you have no answer. Actually, I don't know about you, but I, of course, hate to be in a place where there is no answer. <laughs> you know, you hate that. You can call that limbo, you know. And those days we were taught that, uh, you know, uh, children who died before they were baptized or anything, they were, they were in limbo, you know. You know. And modern catechism, I don't know if they teach about limbo, you know. But, uh, but uh, in that moment, when I have lost all answers, remember it's also a blessed moment because you are about to have a divine encounter. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, the Lord. most of the time, that kind of moment of, of unknowing, uh, God, I, didn't, I have learned, I hold on to scripture. I don't know what God is doing. I have no answer to what's happening, but I just hold on to the promises of God. Yet I haven't heard his voice. Yet I don't have a direction, but I'm holding on to his word. And when you remain there, you have a divine encounter. You begin to hear his voice. And if you look at this,
verse 6. If you look at verse 6. Now get up and go into the city. Now get, now get up, up and go, go into, into the, the city. city. And you will be told what you must do. And you, you will be, be told what, what you, you must, must do. do. And you see now, up to this time, he was doing things for God. He, he, uh, all this time, uh, uh, he was doing things for God. With the divine encounter, when he fell down from the, we don't know whether it's a horse or he stood up, when he fell down, God was now telling him what to do. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the question is tonight, are you doing what you think is good for God? Or are you allowing him to instruct you? Maturing is we start growing into hearing and doing what God wants. So unfortunately, till we have a real block, we won't stop doing what we are doing. So that's why many people start here, start doing what God wants after a major crisis, after a financial crash, after a love affair, that has been really broken up, you know, and you have lost your, you lost your loved one, or you lost your job, or you have gone through such a big crisis, you know, that uh, you have no, no point in your life. But tonight I want to tell you, for people who don't know God, that's the end of the line. But for those who know God, that's when not only will you hear his voice, he will lead you from that point. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you understand what I'm saying, my brother, my sister? So the only problem is you can't do this in a meditation only. <laughs> because if it's only meditation, of course, you could have easily done it. You know? But the problem is this happens with the, together with the incidents of your life. So don't waste your incidents. I remember one priest was sharing, you know, when we were abroad in, in the United States or Canada, I can't remember now. Uh, he was sharing his meeting with John Paul II, who is now a saint. And they were planning to go to Rome, to Vatican, and they had this appointment, this audience with the, with the Pope. And actually, they were so uh, excited. And then, while preparing, he broke his leg in two places. And it was really painful. And uh, yet he decided to put the plaster on, and with that discomfort, still go and meet the Pope. So he flew from America, went to Rome, and then here was the audience. And then the Pope came talking to people, and he came to this man, and he saw he was in pain. And then the Pope asked him, is it very painful? He said, yes, your holiness, it's excruciatingly painful. And then the Pope told him, don't waste your pain. <laughs> and walked away. Don't waste your pain. What does that mean, don't waste your pain? Let the discomfort you are going through, let the uncertainty you are going through drive you to sit at the feet of God. Praise the Lord. His Praise instruction, his guidance is at hand. And if you just walk away, Asking the question, why we have actually wasted that opportunity. So therefore, here is the thing. He, uh, 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 Jesus told him, now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. A crisis was leading him. 
verse 7. The men traveling with Saul the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. Stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Verse 8. Saul got up from the ground. Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. He could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. Can you see that? Now Saul can't see. All his self-confident vision was gone. And that's what happens in pain and crisis. And that's what happens to people in struggle. All our self con we are blinded. We don't know what to do. And spiritual masters will tell us, if you don't know what to do, you are in a great place. Because you can be open to the new thing God wants to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, need to, we need to understand that just because you have pain, just because you are having discomfort, just because you are having a struggle does not mean that things are bad. It simply means God is blinding your understanding to give his understanding. To give his voice and lead us into the future. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have, have you heard that voice? That's the question we need to ask. And if you look at it, verse 9, for three days, for three days, he was blind. He was blind. And did not eat or drink anything. And did not eat or drink anything. So here he is in the desert. Uncertain, not knowing what to do. He's in this situation because God is preparing him to from stopping doing what he wants. God is preparing him to do what God wants. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So here it goes on. In Damascus, verse 10, I'm reading verse 10. Damascus. In Damascus, there was a disciple called Ananias. Damascus. There was a disciple called Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. To him in a vision. Ananias. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him. The Lord told him. Go to the house of Judas. Go to the house of Judas. On Straight Street. On Straight Street. And ask for a man from Tarsus. And ask for a man from Tarsus. Name Saul. Name Saul. For he is praying. For he is praying. Isn't that beautiful? Saul is now blinded. He doesn't know what to do. So he's fasting he's, and he's praying. He's waiting for God to send him. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Here I am. So I'm inviting you. There will be times in our life when things are not clear, when we don't know what to do. And he says, okay, I'll take you forward, but stop looking at life through your own understanding and remain in prayer. I'm going to do a new thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So here you can see what happened immediately. Verse 12. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. Come and place his hands on him. 
come and place his hands on him to restore his sight to restore his sight can you see that now god is now preparing a, a future for saul and in that everything is in place if you come to him hear his voice he will lead you into the future praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and he has a beautiful plan only thing is ananias also had a few things to work out you know so verse 13 is ananias the one who is ministering also had a problem and if you look at it it says lord and lord ananias answered lord ananias answered i have heard many reports about this man i have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in jerusalem and all the harm he has done to your saints in jerusalem so ananias is actually of the impression that jesus doesn't know much you know <laughs> he's telling you you know i want to give you some information you know that uh, you don't know what he's doing you know you don't know his real motives you know and don't we spend a lot of our time actually uh, explaining to jesus uh, the true picture and what's the true picture my picture <laughs> and we explaining it you know how 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 much of time we take to do that and he is doing the same thing you know because he's also trapped in his background and look at this beautiful answer uh, verse 14 he goes on to explain and he has come here with authority and he has come here with authority from the chief priest from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name to arrest all who call on your name and he says you don't know what he's come here to do you know verse 15 but the lord said to ananias the lord said to ananias go go this man is my chosen instrument this man is my chosen instrument you can write down if you are writing my brother my sister god has a plan for your life so i mean you come to him when you hear his voice he will send you according to his plan so I, you know <coughs> saul if he was a modern day person he would have asked you know what's my basic you know and then uh, what are the perks you know and uh, holidays what about the provident fund and how does the, how does this thing fit together you know what are my what are my prospects you know how do we you know the you know but god is not explaining any of that stuff and here it is he says here this man is my chosen instrument you can repeat that this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name to carry my name before the gentiles before the gentiles and they are kings and they are kings and before the people of israel and before the people of israel can you see that god has a plan to bless you he has a plan to bless the world through you and i think that when people say their life is meaningless what they are saying is we haven't yet discovered god's plan praise the lord praise, praise the lord, lord. so lord. actually it's not through a long rigmarole that you find it you come to him you sit at his feet if they if you come to a blank wall you enter into prayer and you wait for the plan to be revealed and it will be revealed beautifully given to us 
The only thing is this verse 16 is an unnecessary verse. Anyway, uh, we'll have to read it. Can't help it. <laughs> this, uh, you know, I'm sure you all agree with me. This is a really unnecessary verse. I will show him. I will show him. How much he must suffer. How much he must suffer. For my name. For my name. The earlier verse was so good, no. I'm going before kings, I'm the envoy, you know, I'm before rulers, before the leaders. Wow, diplomatic passport I've got, you know, and I've got business class traveling, you know, and I've got everything in its rightful place, you know, and then he goes and spoils it all. <laughs> and what does he say? I will show him how much he must suffer. Why this suffering? The suffering, as I understand it now, 40 years into the journey. Actually, suffering is all mental. When you have to let go your plan and accept God's plan into your life. You know, there's a massive battle your nature won't give in. You know, it thinks uh, you've gone crazy. You know? <laughs> you're, you're abandoning your the, the the safety and security of your own understanding. Are you mad here? You know? And here, in that struggle, he said, in that suffering, a miracle is going to take place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, verse 17. Then Ananias went to the house. Then Ananias went to the house. And entered it. And entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said. Placing his hands on Saul, he said. Brother Saul. Brother Saul. The Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road. The Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road. As you were coming here. As you were coming here. Has sent me. Has sent me. So that you may see again. So that you may see again. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. You may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, without being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can't have a journey. But then here he says, you may see again. Look at this. Verse 18. Immediately, immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he could see again. And he could see again. He got up and was baptized. He got up and was baptized. Actually, till recently, you know, uh, Mercy Amma, uh, she had a, uh, a re revelation in prayer, which she was sharing with me uh, yesterday. You know. And that revelation uh, in her prayer time gave me a new insight into Saul. You know, the scales fell from his eyes. When you say scales fell from his eyes, we are, and or actually I was assuming that a block to seeing fell and he saw. But she said, the real scales was, the real blindness was how he saw things till he met the Lord. When the scales fell from his eyes meant that he began to see as Jesus sees. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. My brother, my sister, the Lord. this is the call that God has on your life. When you come to him, when you sit at his feet and hear his voice, he will, to do what he says, he will show you everything through his own eyes. Everything becomes crystal clear. And then you begin to realize, my God, this is the real way 
to see it. Now he wanted to murder all the Christians. He wanted to do terrible things to them. Look at verse 20. You know, we were reading verse uh, 18. Look at verse 20. At once he began to preach in the synagogues. At once he began to preach in the synagogues. That Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son of God. Can you see that? His whole understanding had shifted with the blindness. When he became blind, his own vision of life became confused. And when Jesus touched him, he saw everything through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we just praise and thank the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise your Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise your hallelujah. That is what prayer must do. That's what prayer must do. You come to him, you start hearing his voice, and as you come to do what he says, there's a blindness that comes over our own understanding. And there's a revelation of how God or Jesus sees everything. The moment you see that, you have peace, you have rest, and the guidance opens up for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So waiting in that dryness... Yes. Waiting in that struggle, that's perseverance. You know, on, on Saturday, we had the family meeting. You know, and one of our servers, Nishi, she shared a testimony. You know, and many know Nishi. Uh, her husband was a joint co-owner of, uh, uh, of Pan in Wattala, you know, the restaurant pan. And uh, they were fluent, they were fine. Uh, in 2018, uh, she, be she became a server and she got her husband in and they began to walk with God. The husband learned to say prayers, come to the Maboli meeting, uh, found a deeper unity. They were really happy to walk together uh, into the future. And unexpectedly, uh, the son got COVID and then uh, the rest of the family got and her husband became serious and he died. And she was explaining her husband and she was saying, you know, uh, he was really, he was really a person who didn't take a single day's leave in years. Fit, working hard, yet died. And when that happens, actually, we try to use a very frequently the letter in the alphabet that is letter number 25. You know what letter number 25 is on the alphabet? No, what's it? Why? <laughs> Why? Why this? Why that? Why the other thing? Why? Saul also would have asked, why? Why my blindness? Why was I thrown off? Why is this happening to me? No. When you have a journey with God, you have a different understanding. And that's what a prayer life does. And I like to read uh, what Nishi said after his death. And he said, she says it beautifully. And I can't say it because I have to put the other text, I have deleted it. So <laughs> I'm sorry. So I can tell it by, by memory or oh, by. Uh, 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 by and large, you know. So, 
Actually, she says she did not because she said, I realized that I have come to this earth not to make my permanent home here, but to return to the father one day. So she says, I realized that my husband went before me and sooner or later, I'll follow him. So she said, I don't want to waste the time I have here on earth mourning, weeping, wailing. But I want to make my time productive. So I want to make it productive by doing what I can for God, for my family, and for my neighbors. Because that's the time God has left me with. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So my brothers and sisters, why didn't she get into depression? Why didn't she question God? Why didn't she lose her way? Simple, because the way she saw herself and the world was in Christ. So does something get you down? Does it defeat you? Are you unable to cope? Is it that you are not hearing and seeing as God wants. Is that the real reason why you're going through this? And therefore, is the Lord asking us, come sit at my feet. Hear my voice. Learn to worship. And I will lead you to my understanding of your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It won't happen. Brothers and sisters, tonight I'm inviting you, let's actually realize how we see things may not be the right way. How we understand our life may be all twisted. And that's why some, more, some people are all the time getting into trouble because the, their inner life is twisted. You know? But how does it all change in a prayer life, intimacy with God? sitting at his feet, hearing his voice, and then the shift will take place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So do you have any questions? Because we can do the prayer after the question, just in case the, the thing shifts. No questions have come. Not Anyone yet. Okay, then we'll do that. Anyone can answer. <laughs> yeah, there you can ask an open question also. You know, you can, if you have a question, you can ask me. No. So I've been signed out and all I Jerry, I saw Jerry come in and we'll, we'll come before him. We'll build a throne of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
singer in his time we'll sing this beautiful hymn as a prayer to really to, to allow god to build our future in our hearts in his time in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time lord please show me every day no because every day you have to learn this letting go our plan and accepting yes as you are teaching me your way like he taught Saul you see Saul was religious Lord Saul was zealous Saul was loving God but all wrong and so God in his mercy reaches into his heart hits his head against a wall blinds him and then reveals the deeper plan he had for him. I take you to be my witness among kings. You I told you a new way. Lord please show me every day as you are teaching me your way. That you do just what you say in your time. That you will find us a deep answer in this time. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your worship. Thank you. 
Jesus Lord Jesus as I come before you as I come before you I bring all the plans I had I bring all the plans I had all my dreams all my dreams all my desires all my desires I somehow wanted them fulfilled some more wanted them fulfilled i fought for it i fought for it but today but today i lay it all at your feet i lay it all at your feet i realize i am a soul i realize i am a soul with my own dreams with my own dreams with my own understanding with my own understanding holding on stubbornly holding on stubborn but today lord jesus but today lord jesus i want to be paul i want to be paul i want your dream for my life i want your dream for my life i want your plan for my life i want your plan for my life the plan of those much bigger than saul's dream and that was much bigger than Saul's dream Lord Jesus Lord Jesus deep trust in your love trust in your love i want to offer you my life i want to offer you my life let your plan our plan your design our design be manifested in my life manifested in my life we're going to sing the uh beautiful lines uh it says uh lord my life to you i bring lord uh may uh, my life to you i bring may each song i have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time as i surrender my life my every action becomes a song becomes a worship to god and then he say day by day lord for today you show me the way tomorrow you show me the way day after you show me the way and you take me into the future Hallelujah hallelujah praise be to your glory to your name hallelujah hallelujah praise you father hallelujah thank you worship you father praise you father hallelujah praise you father hallelujah thank you thank you praise you father hallelujah praise you father i 
Touch our blindness, Lord, as we come. Reach into our sadness, Lord, as we come. Let your revelation become real in every Lord, we pray tonight for a breakthrough in every son and daughter here. Because as we pray for this breakthrough, we pray for a miracle. And in this miracle, Lord, we pray that we be blinded to the things of this world, to the understanding that has only come from our childhood and our brokenness. Like we were blinded to you, Lord, let us be blinded to the world and you open our eyes to your plan, to your ways, to your mighty revelation into our future. Lord, we pray for that breakthrough deeper and deeper in our lives. We sing that verse, there are times, there are days, weeks and months, we cannot understand God's ways. If for years we fail to scan what is His eternal plan, if we are confused, if we don't know what His eternal plan is, then remember that He can all the time. That He can all the time. Let's begin. There are times, maybe we are going through such a time in our life. I'm going through such a time in my life. And the Lord is saying, I'm leading you through it to my plan and purpose. Lord, we pray when things are not clear, when we are blinded, it is we are blinded to the world. But you are so clear. You will lead us through all the confusion like a deer and a hind's feet. That you will show us on the complicated mountain exactly how to lay our feet. And you will open a breakthrough in our life in the most powerful way. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you, Father, glory to you, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you, Father, hallelujah, thank you, praise you, hallelujah, praise you, Father, there are days. There are days. 
weeks and months we cannot understand god's will weeks and months we cannot understand god's will if for years we fail to stand What is his eternal plan? What is his eternal plan? And remember that he can. Then remember that he can. All the time. All the time. Say it again. There are times. Lord is saying tonight My children some of you think that the ground is too dry the, the atmosphere is too hard there will never be a breakthrough But the Lord is saying I'm already breaking the ground around you with my word in one word the hard ground that would not yield will be shattered and a new path will be opened for you as you wait for me learn to trust in me i am doing a new thing in your life says the lord praise you father hallelujah glory to your name hallelujah 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 praise you father so someone who's having some problem with a nostril maybe it's a growth a block or a, or a, 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 a defect that doesn't allow this person to use that nostril normally and the lord is saying i'm touching you right now and you will feel a difference as you breathe so if you are there actually you can there's that raising the hand on your on your screen you will find if you think if you know that it's the lord is told you that word you can just uh, uh, claim it or you can put it into the chat so that we can really glorify god and if you know god has spoken because there is a distinct leading to open to that word 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory. Yes, we have a person claiming that word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We have two people, actually. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You give us a breakthrough with your mighty hand and your mighty power as you release your powerful presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. 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 So thank you, Lalitata, for the wonderful session that you have been conducting for all these uh, for the past three weeks. And some of us are new to this life of uh, spirit and some of us uh, uh, have been in the life of spirit and yet the sessions that you were giving us were actually helpful to both the new and the young. And we thank and praise God for you. So before we conclude our session today, just a few announcements to be given. So uh, if you... Want, if you still have not, um, uh, we have our uh, YN meetings weekly on Mondays from 7 to 8.30. And if you still have not, uh, is not part of our YA WhatsApp group, uh, you can contact one of, uh, either you can contact Gavin or Kaprukshi and get yourself registered. Or else even if you were not able to register yourself using the, um, the Google form that we have sent, even you can contact them and get the form and register yourself so then we can easily send you all the details regarding all our YA meetings. And um, so we also uh, hold our Wednesday meeting from uh, 6 to 7.45. And then we also have uh, the prayer rooms that will take place if you want to um, get prayed over individually. We have the prayer rooms after the Wednesday meeting uh, from eight uh, from seven forty five to eight fifteen, and then we also have an intercessory prayer uh, that we will be um, having on every Friday. And this, these are the details that are all the details that are displayed to you on uh, on over here. So uh, this uh, the. Intercessory prayer takes place every Friday from 8.30 to 9.30, and it would be great if you can join in and pray with all the elders and the young and the older alike and to intercede on behalf of our country. Uh, so other than that, we also have uh, social media that you can always keep in contact with us if you need any help, if you need any prayers, if you want to uh, contact someone from the CRF, you can uh, reach out to us through these platform. You can reach out to us through, through these uh, WhatsApp numbers that are uh, through these numbers that are displayed over here, or you can drop us an email at ask at crlmain.org. Um, even if you have a testimony to share, you can still do so by contacting these numbers and the email address. And other than that, you can always reach out to us on one of these platforms. We have uh, a CRL page on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, most of our Wednesday meetings, uh, all our Wednesday meetings, and most of our other meetings are also, uh, even today, uh, also are conducted, uh, actually recorded and are live streamed through YouTube. So you can or anytime you can access these feeds and you can uh, pray along or you can listen to them. So thank you again for joining with us today and we hope you have a blessed week. Praise the Lord. The grace of God upon
these words. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.